Did the NHL just screw the Islanders? Because right now, a lot of people are saying bad refereeing just caused them an overtime playoff loss. Let's jump into OT. I'll do the recap later. Mayfield on the Islanders is playing the puck near the wall, and he takes an errant stick to the face from Martinook. This is a clear high stick. However, nothing was called, despite there being officials looking straight at the play. According to the commentators, Martinook would then go yell at the official, leaving his side of the ice open. Jordan Stahl hits Jesper fast, and that's the game. Now, yes, I will acknowledge, even if you take a high stick, it's the playoffs, you shouldn't abandon your side as a D-man. There's a reason Fast was so open, it's because Mayfield was out of position. Still, you cannot miss those calls. You just can't. That should have been a two or perhaps even four minute penalty, depending on the severity of the high stick. The only potential reason I wouldn't call this as a ref is if Mayfield caused the stick to fly into his own face, and while he does make contact, that's not enough. NHL Rule 60 states that the intention of the offending player and high sticking doesn't matter. A player has to be in control of his stick. They're responsible for it. The only exception is in the follow-through of a shot, which is clearly not relevant here. And I will see during the edit, the Islander player hitting the stick up is a little more obvious. But to me, the rule is still pretty clear. Any contact made by a stick on an opponent above the shoulders is prohibited. That's what it says. This is a penalty. And what makes this worse is that the Islanders were on the wrong end of penalties all night. They, in fact, didn't have a single power play all game, which is rare, and we'll see how penalties played into the scoring. Carolina opened the game with a Jacob Slavin one-timer from a really tough angle after some strong forechecking and aggressive play by Brent Burns. And I gotta say, I thought Burns was actually really great for Carolina. He was buzzing in the offensive zone all night, and I think that's what they wanted him for. However, from that point, the Islanders would be bogged down in a pair of four four minute double minors. This would really make it tough for them to get any momentum going, but when it looked like they might successfully kill off the second double minor, there's a weird play where Sebastian Ajo bats the puck out of midair into his own net. The Islanders, however, would tie it up first with a Palmieri backhand, then a Barzell shot. They would even go up, and by the way, on this goal, Nate just nearly took a penalty here. We're getting very close to interference, but either way, three unanswered Islanders goals. However, Slavin, from a very tough angle, would end up tying the game 3-3 leading to the overtime. I'm a Rangers fan but I understand why the Islanders faithful are very vocally angry right now and they have every right to be. This was a blown call. It cost them the game and a 1-1 series is very very different from a 2-0 series which is the universe that the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders are now operating in. But what did you think of the game? Let me know all of that and more down below.